Hey everyone, Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com. So, last time I talked to you a little bit about the structure of how to approach someone you're interested in. This time I want to take a deeper dive into one of the most important parts of meeting somebody. Building that immediate, powerful connection with them that ensures they will not be able to stop thinking about you. How many times have you had a conversation that has gone something like this? Hi. Hey. So what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm retired. I invented dice when I was a kid. Oh. Yeah. How about you? Mm, I do a little acting. <laughs> I'm gonna see who else is here. This is actually a common sticking point for a lot of guys. You have a conversation that you think is going well, and then as soon as you stop talking, that's it, and they've basically forgotten that you exist. Meanwhile, you see those annoying guys like Gary, who can just roll up to her and talk with her right after you did, and now they're getting ready to leave the party together, and he knew that you were into her, and why does she have to like him? God damn it, Gary! This can be even more frustrating when it feels like you've been doing everything right, you've been focusing on them, you've been asking questions, you've been looking for commonalities. So why does it work for other people, but not for you? Well, I'm glad you asked, convenient rhetorical device. Part of what makes one person pleasant, but forgettable, and the other person magnetic, is that sense of, I've known you forever, or I can't put my finger on it, but there is just something about you. This is what creates those moments where the conversation is just flowing effortlessly as you get to know each other, and you're both incredibly excited to talk to each other, and time disappears because there's only just the two of you. These are the sorts of moments that lead people to believe in soulmates. But here's the dirty little secret. You can do this deliberately. Yes, this sort of connection does happen by chance, but if you understand why and how we connect with people, then through your actions, you can build that connection by choice. Don't get me wrong, this isn't about being fake, it's not about creating a false persona or being someone you're not any more than dressing well and styling your hair as being fake. You're not trying to pretend to be someone else, you're not tricking people into liking you, this isn't that mind control bullshit that I went off about a couple episodes ago. All you're doing is adjusting your behavior, being mindful of the other person and paying close attention to the kind of impression that you're making. The key is to remember that humans are emotional beings. For all that we like to talk about being rational and logical, most of the time we're using that rational part of our brains to justify how we feel. People are going to remember how you made them feel far more than they're going to remember anything else about you. So you're going to want to make them feel the right emotions. And you're going to start this in a very paradoxical way. You are going to assume that you are already friends, that you already know each other, and that you already like each other. I know, I know, I know this sounds like some woo-woo bullshit about sending the right energy out into the universe, but there's actually a point behind this. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're meeting someone new is that they have an agenda. They want something from that person, and they're fishing around for the best way to get it from them. Think of the times that you've had someone come up and start a conversation with you that you knew was just the prelude to them trying to make a sale. You know damn good and well that everything they're saying is just leading up to the pitch, so now you're waiting around uncomfortably for them to get to the point already. That feeling's uncomfortable because you know this person just wants something from you and they're only pretending to care so they can figure out the best way to get it. That's how a lot of flirting feels, honestly. You're just trying to sell someone your dick. Even in explicitly sexual spaces, where sex and hookups are the reason why everybody is there, nobody likes to feel like a mobile sex doll. The point of connecting and flirting isn't, how do I generate enough attraction to get you to do what I want? It's, how do I get to know you and connect with you and see if this is something that we would like to do together? Assuming that you're already friends and proceeding accordingly, forces you to ditch the agenda. You're not there to wow them or to impress them. You're there to talk to them, to get to know them, and to connect with them. Sure, you're attracted to them, but your attraction is not the end-all be-all of your interest in them. By focusing less on your agenda and more on them, you're able to show genuine interest in them. Interest that makes them feel good 
because you're validating them. Now, validating someone doesn't mean that you're sucking up to them or kissing their ass and telling them how wonderful they are. What you're doing is that you're showing that you give their thoughts and opinions weight, that you find what they have to say valuable. Huh, I never thought about it like that before, or wow, I didn't realize that and then asking more questions. You really want to encourage them to be doing a lot of the talking, and you want to make sure that they know that you're paying attention with little check-ins, little notes going, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, right, no, I get it, yeah. If they seem to be slowing down, or if the topic is starting to peter out, you can encourage them to keep talking by taking what they just said and repeating it back as a question. Internet ads? Or paraphrasing what they had said and feeding it back. So, wait. You found your ex taking a bubble bath in your bathroom with his Krav Maga teacher? This is an almost irresistible prompt to keep talking, and it encourages them to give you more information without you being pushy about it. Of course, you don't want the conversation to be one-sided. You're not there to interview them. You're there to connect with them. So you're going to want to give a little bit about yourself, too especially in areas that they can relate to or that you share. But ultimately, the key is letting the conversation be mostly about them. This is especially important because a lot of times when we talk to people, we're not really having a conversation so much as a one-upsmanship contest. We're not talking, we're waiting for our chance to show off a little bit, to share our even cooler experience or our more amazing story. And we're ignoring what they have to say because we're just looking for our opportunity to show off how awesome we are and demonstrate that we have higher social value. Nerds and geeks can be especially bad about this. We have a tendency to try to bowl someone over with how much we know about a topic, throwing around our authority and facts like the glorious plumage of an especially geeky peacock. And this is not terribly appealing to anyone, even other nerds. It's sort of an attempt at attraction through authority. It solidifies you as someone who wants other people to look up at you with awe, not to make a connection with them. It's ego masturbation not flirting. So what you want to do instead is choke off your ego um, phrasing. and focus more on what they have to say. And when you have something to share, finding a way to relate it to them or to find common ground with them. Oh, do you read Saga? Cool. Oh, dude. Oh, man. Did you tear up the way that I did when or no? Cool. I, I think you'd really dig it. So what have you been into lately? What have you been reading? Really? Oh, cool. I, I've been meaning to check that out. What do you like about it? Keep that conversation flowing, even when you don't necessarily agree with them, even when they're not necessarily right about something. In fact, you may want to restrain that impulse to correct somebody. It has a way of putting people on the defensive, even when you don't mean to. Sometimes it's better to let things go. Put building that rapport with them ahead of being technically correct. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. Another thing to keep in mind is what your body language is telling them. In my video on charisma, I talk about the importance of having warm, open, and inviting body language. This is important because you want to signal your friendliness, your openness, your warmth to the other person. However, you also want to make sure that your words and your tonality match what your body is saying. If there's a mismatch, if your words are confident, but your body language isn't, you're going to be incongruent. Your words and your voice are saying one thing, but your body language is saying another. That means either you're lying or you're really, really confused, and that makes people uncomfortable. But the most important thing you can do in creating that instant powerful rapport with someone is creating that feeling of we are the same. Remember how I'm always talking about how we like the people who are like us? Creating that sense of how much you have in common is an important part of building that powerful connection. We like people who are of the same tribe, as it were, and we have a lot of ways of showing our tribal affiliation, from the things that we're interested in, to the way we dress, to the way that we talk. For example, I am more likely to approach women who are visibly tattooed, because I'm pretty tattooed up myself. This is an immediate point of commonality, something that we share. But those similarities go beyond commonalities or shared values. When we really like someone, we tend to 
act like them. We unconsciously sync up with them and pick up some of their mannerisms, the way that they move, the way that they sit, sometimes the way they talk, or even their accent. We take a drink at the same time they do, or we sit the same way that they do. It's a way of reinforcing similarities, of showing, look how alike we are. But you can choose to create that feeling by consciously adopting their behavior. Don't get me wrong, you're not slavishly imitating them, and you're not doing man in the mirror exercises. What you're doing is you're paying attention to them, and you're picking up some of the little gestures they do. Start with the most important factor, matching their energy. Think of it this way. If you're not a morning person, God knows I'm not, and someone comes bounding up to you at 8 a.m. and they're all perky and cheerful, you kind of want to rip their heads off. So it is with matching somebody else's energy. When you match their energy, they feel more comfortable with you. So if they're of higher energy than you are, raise yours accordingly. Try to get a little bit more excited. If they are lower energy, lower yours a bit. Be a little bit more subdued. Just keep it a little bit higher than theirs. You want to give something from them to reach up to as well. Now. Pay attention to them. Do they talk with their hands? Then you're going to want to make similar gestures the way that they do. Do they use particular turn of phrases? Or do they have a propensity for using sensory language? How would they describe something? Are they more likely to describe how something looks or how it feels? You want to use the same sort of phrases and the same sort of descriptors that they do. Match the cadence and the rhythm of how they talk. Watch their body. Look at their posture. Look at their hands. How are they sitting? How are they touching things? Are they leaning on something? Are they shifting their weight? When you see how they're standing, how they're sitting, how they're leaning, slowly, subtly match your body to theirs. If they're sitting like this, you want to sit like this. If they take a drink, you want to take a drink. You want to try to do this about at the same time they do. Shift your weight to match theirs. Angle your body to the same direction that they are. So remember, again, you're not playing stop copying me, you're just showing that you're in sync. These are, in practice, very little things, but they add up quickly and they're all part of how you build this powerful connection. Now one thing to remember, you're not here to be a yes man, you're not here to be a suck up, you're here to get to know them. Don't be afraid to tease a little, to joke around a little bit, to disagree with them, or even to talk about controversial subjects. If you think about how you talk with the people that you're really excited to see, you're not just both sitting there nodding your heads constantly in agreement. You banter back and forth. You disagree. You banter back and forth. You make fun, you poke gentle fun at one another. You want to create that same vibe, that sense of playful fun that you have with your intimates, the people that you're close to. But more than anything else, you want to create that feeling that you are amazing and that they have never met anyone like you before. Those first impressions are important because they're going to forever affect how they see you afterwards. If you don't make a strong, memorable first impression, they're not going to remember you. But if you create that strong first impression, the one that says, man, I don't know what it is, but there is just something about you, then they're going to trust you, they're going to open up to you, and more importantly, they're not going to be able to stop thinking about you. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. If you have a short dating question or a topic you want to hear more about, tell me all about it in the comments below. If you've been digging the series, be sure to smash the thumbs up button, share it around with your friends, tell everybody you know all about it. If you've been really digging it, if you've been getting a lot out of this, if you feel like the series has been helping you and you want to consider supporting it, then please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 a month is a huge help. Meanwhile, books, I've written them. You want to read them. Links to buy them are in the show notes below. And if you do, do me a huge solid and leave a review on Amazon and Goodreads. It is a massive help to any author. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Dr. Nerdlove. Join the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Dr. Nerdlove. And as always, hit the logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will be back with you next week with more tips about love, sex, and dating. Later.